Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Today is going to be a fantastic, fun, fun day. I'm so very, very excited. We are approaching July the 4th, and July the 4th in LJ, there will be a parade at 6 o'clock. But July the 4th, beginning at 5 p.m. in LJ, there will be an open house at 312 South Main Street, which is right across the street from Ace Hardware. And I just got a message and a note from my dear friend, who owns the Ella J Dairy Queen and the Jasper Dairy Queen and this Dairy Queen and that Dairy Queen and he is giving us 200 coupons to give away to you, to your friends, to your relatives. Come and visit us at the open house. Free ice cream cones and free sausage biscuits. So we're excited about that and thank you to AJ. I love you. I love your family and what a wonderful work ethic family they have. So thank you, thank you, thank you for being a part of that. And also, if you haven't checked out the Dairy Queen here in LJ, breakfast has changed and it is back to those good old homemade biscuits and it is just like it used to be. And I think you will be very, very pleased. So stop by there and again, tell AJ, thank you, thank you, thank you. Because we're gonna have 200 ice cream coupons to give out. We're gonna have biscuit coupons to give out. And you're gonna get a little bit of free stuff from our local Dairy Queen. So thank you, thank you, thank you. They've been a sponsor for a long time and I just love those guys. So. Today is going to be very different. Today is going to be reminiscing. You know, um, my grandmother was probably my favorite person in my whole life, all my life. I wish there were things I could talk to her about. I wish there were things I could reminisce with her. I wish I had lots of recordings of her sitting and talking to me. We have a recorded thing today we're gonna share that I did yesterday. And it is with a wonderful 86-year-old gentleman from here in LJ that many of you know and you love and you grew up with him, you grew up around him, you may have worked for him, and we're going to share that in just a little bit. I'm so excited to have spent the time with him and he just grins all the time and just such a sweetheart, such a sweetheart. So we're going to get to that. I also want to remind you that the real estate market is still very hot and um, if you are looking to list, pick up the phone and call us at 404-375-0590. If you're looking to buy, pick up the phone and call us. We just listed a fantastic house in Kusawati. It's a very rare find because it has three lots. So you got privacy, you got the house, you got privacy, you got it all. It has um, an amazing Everything about it is move-in ready mint condition, so absolutely gorgeous. And the other day, a baby deer was born right at the edge of the porch. So just a fantastic property. It is listed for $459, and that means that almost all the furnishings in the house will stay, except the master bedroom suite, and you can bring your own, but the rest of everything is gonna be move-in ready. It is absolutely fantastic, and again, Evelyn and I would love to show you this house. It is beautiful. We're working on a commercial for it and I can't wait to share it with you. But you know, when you think about you're moving to the mountains, people are working from home and that's one of the great things about having ETC services. We have great internet. And so if you are working from home, you can use your internet services and not drive to the office. And who wants to drive anywhere with the gas prices like they are? So you get to, you get to work at home in your office at Kusawati and you get to watch the deer born in your yard. So that's a pretty good deal. So pick up the phone and call us again. And it is a beautiful home. It's on three lots and it has a complete finish downstairs with a private opening. So that means that if you have guests, they can come and go without bothering you, which is very, very important. Today's program is based on um, a friendship, a very, very long friendship. And the gentleman that we're gonna feature I actually met him because of the trucking business. Um, my husband and I were in the trucking business for 38 years and he and his wife were in the business for over 50 years, I think he told me. And at the same time, he was doing other jobs. We find that most people multitask and um, it's not you just have a job. If you do this, then you also do this and then you do this. If you're a wife and you're working, you also go home and you take care of the children. If you're a husband and you're working, you also go home and take care of the yards and, and that kind of stuff, but you also may have another job. And we were talking about a special family down in Ball Ground and how he's way past retirement age, but he still works two jobs. And I'm like, okay. And somebody asked me, I was interviewing this wonderful young man on Sunday and he said, are you retired? And I said, no, I'm not retired, nor am I gonna retire. I'll just follow her dad at work. But 
I think there's something about staying active, staying busy, and when you see the gentleman that I interviewed yesterday, you will love. He's busy every day. He's 86, and he hasn't settled in at just sitting around. He's busy, 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 and I love that about him. So I hope that you will um, enjoy. We're going to have some music today we're going to feature, too, some great music. And a little bit of music from Don's birthday party, and um, it's just going to be a fun day, and I hope you're going to enjoy it. We also, you know, Don gives me these things. She's, she's professional at buying Mama something to say. Today, June 14th, and I think this is really cool, because this is a hard one. It is impossible to hate someone you continually pray for. Trust God who is completely righteous, for He promises, I will contend with those who contend with you. And that's Isaiah 49, 25. So, uh, yeah, Don, thank you very much. And somebody asked me the other day, did I, did I talk to God? And I said, yeah. And, and I laughed because this is what I said. He always tells me, be still, just be still. And then they said, does he ever say be quiet? And I said, I don't know. I didn't ask him. So, but, you know, life is what it is. And you make the most of life. And, and when I was talking to this gentleman yesterday, I said, you know, I remember your wife, but I don't remember what did she die from? Well, it was cancer, of course. Um, so many people are battling cancer. My sister needs your prayers. Um, I still don't have my biopsy results. I'm hoping that everything is wonderful. I had two biopsies done last week. That's why I wasn't here. Waiting on the results and waiting on some good results. That's what I'm saying, good results. But if you know somebody who's battling cancer, put them on your prayer list. Make sure you add them to your daily prayers because prayers work. And um, so many of us, so many people are, are leaving us because of that awful C word. So there you go. We have a praise report, though, because Selena is doing great. Yay. After 10 treatments, I think. So it's just amazing. So please, um, please remember those who, who are battling that. And, um, and we know that we can make a difference by adding them to our prayer list. Today's program is about to turn into um, just a visit with two old friends. And um, it's going to be fun. It's going to have some music in it. It was done yesterday. And I did it yesterday because I wasn't sure, you know, how we would react here live doing the lights. He'd never done live television. And I just thought, this just makes sense. So I think you're going to enjoy a visit yesterday with sweet, sweet Ed Forrester. So sit back. We're going to take a commercial break. And when we come back, I think we're going to actually do some music, too. We're doing some music from a Hank Williams tribute done by Dwight Sanford. And I'm telling you, I did not realize how long Hank Williams has been dead. He's been dead since 1953. But he still influences the music of today. And so I was listening to the CD this morning and I thought, oh my gosh, it is so cool and it is so today. So we're going to play a little bit of the Hank Williams tribute and then we're going to do some music from Ed Forrester and uh, I think you're going to enjoy this. So y'all sit back, have your second cup of coffee and spend the morning with us. you're in the mood for chicken strips, a delicious burger, our classic banana split, or an upside down thick blizzard treat, we've got you covered. Hot and fresh food every day, every time. And delicious DQ soft serve make the perfect pair at your favorite place. Not fast food, fan food fast. Your Blue Ridge, Ella Day, and Jasper Dairy Queens are your meet, eat, and treat headquarters. Thank you for choosing DQ, how may I serve you? United Country Talking Rock Realty says it best. I'm happy as long as I can see Sharp Top. From the ground up, new home to complete renovation or remodel, we have combined the amazing workmanship of SGC groups, transforming the forgotten to the fabulous. Teamwork makes the dream work. For buying, selling, or flipping, call Sherry Martin at 404-375-0590 or Evelyn Calhoun at 770-733-0779. Whether you're swimming in the sea or splashing in the pool, making a masterpiece or just making memories, writing a great American novel or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow, whatever you do in life, 
Farmers is here to protect it. For all your insurance needs, call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge. High-speed Wi-Fi. Not quite as important as running water in your home, but close. Ignite Internet from ETC powers your Wi-Fi network with consistent speeds to keep all your gadgets going strong. Streaming video players, laptops, tablets, even smartphones, so you're never stuck with those big cell data charges. And talk about value. Just pick your speed and keep the Wi-Fi flowing in your home at a great low price. Upgrade your Internet today. Call or visit etcnow.com to learn more. Sanford. Thank you for tuning in to the Sherry Show on ETC Television today. ETC is a locally owned company and they are neighbors serving neighbors. I'm here today with a good friend of mine, Ed Forrester, born and raised right here in Gilmer County and ain't it good to be home again? It just is, ain't it? So here we are. Ed, tell us a little bit about yourself. You were born where? In Roy, Georgia? Is that right? Roy, Georgia on Roy Road out there. Yeah. East side of Gilmer County. Yes, sir. And I, I was born uh, April 15, 1936. Yeah, that's <laughs> been a while back, ain't it? Now, back then, Roy Roy Road out there had its own post office. Is that right? That's, that's right. right. Yeah. We're Roy, right Georgia. Heck yeah. Well, and you grew up right there, and you, you turned six years old, and you started to school where? Twig school to start with when I was five years old. Yeah. Then they made us go to Oakland school and then I went to Ella J. Yeah. Come on down to Ella J. Well, you've had a very interesting life, Mr. Ed, and uh, I've known you a very, very long time. I played the drums in your band in 1982, 83, and 84 right in there. And uh, that was called the Rustlers. You was the front man for that band and had, had a lot going on back then. Who, what all was going on with that band? Well, we was together for about 14 years. I was in the trucking business, so I, it was just a little bit too hard for me to truck and play music all the time, too. So yeah. I quit and come back home from the Louisiana Hayride out there. Yeah. Well, I know you had some fine players in that band, old Larry Stewart, Henry Wilson, and Mitchell Aaron, and uh, Eloise Hayes. Eloise Hayes, yes, yeah, you played the keyboards, and I played the drums for the longest yeah. time. And that went real well. I enjoyed that time. Uh, he enjoyed having it. Yeah, and uh, tell us about how this trucking, there was Forrester Trucking, right here in LJ, Georgia. So, folks, we're talking about local stuff. This is what we're all about. Home again, that's what we are. And uh, the, the Forrester trucking got started how? Well, I was, uh, I went to stay a week uh, with Beaver Southern between Christmas and New Year's, and uh, it was cold that year, and uh, I already had my branch banks bowed out of farming and everything, so I went down there to stay a week with him between Christmas, you know. New Year, so I thought I'd just get me a job. So I went over there and, and uh, started working extra at the trucking company, and I kept doing that till I got on regular. Yeah. Now, when you started your <coughs> trucking company, was was it was it more local runs to start with, or or did you just immediately take off doing uh, cross country stuff? No, I I worked in the city, Atlanta, down there with Hoover Motor Express. For yeah. The rider bought us out, and I lost my seniority. Yeah, and then you started. Uh, you started running. Really you run mainly out to California and places. Didn't you? Never did go to California. Oh, you didn't. But I run Texas and Oklahoma. Yeah. After I come back. Yeah. I come back to L.A.J. in '72, and I started the uh, Forester Transportation Systems. There you go. So Heck yeah. I was running to Oklahoma and Texas and Florida and. 23 states in yeah. the southeast. And all through all this trucking, music was running through your head, wasn't it? All the time. 
Yeah. <laughs> How long? How old was you, Ed, when uh, when the music got in your head? Oh, I was, I was born that way. I reckon. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm just like you. Grandpa had an old fiddle, and, and he gave it to Daddy, and Daddy played the fiddle, and so I I started. I didn't have a bowl to play, so I started picking it with a comb tooth. Yeah. Picking tunes out yeah, of it. Finally, we got one. And the bowl. Yeah. But I just, uh, when, I, when I started down there to working at uh, Newton Cigar Company, where Vic Davis worked, Yeah. and uh, he got me on down there, so yeah. before I got into the truck. Right. Well, let me ask you this question. Did you ever figure out the chords to any songs while you're sitting behind the wheel of one of them trucks? That's where I played all my music. <laughs> That's what he did. I drove a heister at Galaxy Carpet used to, and it's a sad that the, that the things I figured out musically about songs and things I was working on while driving in the heister. I'd go home, and sure enough, it was right. I played so, bass, and I'd, yeah. I'd play on the steering wheel, you Yes, know. sir. Have, have, stuff. A, have a radio all night yeah. to play with, you know. Mm -hmm. I've even wrote a few songs while I was at work. I did too. <laughs> yeah. Well, you wrote one song called, uh, what was that, that song you wrote? You got on the radio and did pretty good. What was it called? Uh, a Broken Dream. Yeah, that's good. I, I wrote that. That uh, a fellow named Jimmy Smart yeah. recorded that and on the Peach Records over at uh, Cleveland, Georgia. I mean, you recorded it on this album you got too, this yeah. CD that we made. Yeah. I'm glad you made that. He was, uh, he was 83 years old, and folks, he'd about 84. decided 84. Yeah, sorry. And he'd about decided it was too late to make a CD. And you can thank me for talking him straight into doing that. If it hadn't and been I, for you, I wouldn't have done that at all. But I started to quit two or three times. Yeah. You said no, you ain't gonna quit. <laughs> yeah. We made it happen. We got it done. And I want to tell you, it's a good CD, too, folks. It's called Edwin Forrester, Coming Back Home to Georgia. Pick you up a copy of that if you see it anywhere. And uh, it's, it's a lot of good songs on there, good gospel songs and this, that, and the other. We worked hard on it, but it paid off, didn't it, Ed? Yeah, I'm proud of it. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I'm very proud of it. How are these boys?
right back with you. And uh, we're touching on Ed Forster's interesting life he's led right here in this very town called Ella J. That's with a J. And uh, Ed, way back in the days, I don't know about you, but I come up pretty poor. We'd sit around on the porch and play banjos, guitars, whatever we had, and uh, played with everybody across the country. I think you played with, uh, you played a lot with Tim Parker and Ed Fort, or I mean, uh, Vic Davis and a bunch of people. Could you tell us about that? Yeah, it was uh, Tim Parker and Morgan Cantrell. I had the Frosty Mountain Boys. Yes, sir. And, uh, but when I went to school, Vic and Larry Davis was playing, and uh, Clarence Miller, uh, Tommy Duckett, yeah. Willie Aaron, there's a bunch of them played music. And I yeah. just tried to learn everything I could from them, you know. And, yeah. And then I'd get me, got me an old guitar and started learning the chords and all yeah. that. That showed me stuff. That's the way I learned. Gosh, yeah, that's a bunch of good players. And you'd, uh, Jens, ever, when, when you was, uh, when you were back young, did you ever take, go out and light up a fire and uh, maybe bring a chicken and roast it and uh, and have music playing and have a fire going and then roasting chicken and, and the people, that, uh, the old boys would buck dance around the fire. Did you ever do anything like that? We never did. There wasn't that many people up in there where I was. Boy, we did. You go, the, you go the next morning, there'd be a ring war out around where the fire was, where them boys would be buck dancing. We played down yonder in the wildwood <laughs> flyer and rosewood casket and uh, under the double eagle and all that. But uh, but you played with uh, you played with some pretty pretty up to do people too, or played around them and got to know them. Tell us about some of that. Well. Uh, after I went to the Louisiana Hayride, I met with this old boy named Johnny C. And uh, he lived down there. Was, when, when I was working at Newton Cigar, they put me out as a salesman after I drove a truck a while. And uh, the Arctic Bear down there was a, a little ice cream place that Johnny's grandmother running. And I always <laughs> kept a, guitar or, yeah. or something in the car and she said, Do you play music? I said, I'm a trying to play. Yeah. <laughs> she said, my grandson's getting into music and needs a bass player. You know a bass player? I said, yeah, me. And, uh, <laughs> so I, I started playing bass for him and, and uh, Jimmy Atkins, Chet Atkins' nephew played guitar and we went down to the East Point City Auditorium. I had the Georgia Jubilee down there. And so we entered that contest. We won it from beginning to the end and got the money and the record contract. And then they started, they started uh, uh, booking us, you know. They booked us in Savannah, Georgia. And uh, Jimmy told us that, better get your guitar picker. I said, I ain't going nowhere. <laughs> and uh, so we looked, couldn't find a guitar picker to do what we wanted. And uh, I said, we can find a bass player easier than we can find a guitar picker. So what are we gonna do for a guitar picker? I said, I'll play it myself. He said, can you play guitar? I said, no, but I can get by till I can learn. <laughs> like my daddy used to say, I've got to. Yeah, <laughs> so then we went to the hayride and and uh, we, we played lots of places from there. Yeah. And, uh, Played several places in Texas, you know. And, Gosh, yeah. And, uh, and then when I come back, I had that trucking company here, and uh, so I, I decided I might better look after that. Yeah. So I come back, so I got, got to playing with the uh, WPLO Swinging Gentleman Band down there, and I got to play for a lot of people when I played with them. Yeah. Interesting, yeah. very interesting. Now there was a point somewhere, it might have been like me when you was very young, you had an interest in cars, automobiles. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a few. <laughs> yeah. yeah, don't we? Uh, yeah. Uh, what's, uh, you got You got the truck your daddy had when you was, he bought it new, didn't you say? Yeah, he bought it new. He carried the mail back then, so he carried the mail in that truck. And uh, 
Well, he bought the first pickup that uh, Dover Chevrolet here yeah. sold, and he got it in December of '45. Yeah, it was a '46 Chevrolet, and I I started driving that thing. I wasn't but eight or nine years old, yeah. something like that. But I was driving at seven. My brother, yeah. oldest brother, he had 34 Fords and stuff like that. So. I've been driving there since I was seven years old. Yeah, now you got a lot of interesting cars over there, but I think my favorite car that you have is probably this 51 Ford, uh, what is it, F100? Yeah. Uh, that your daddy had. Yeah, that's right. And uh, he, he had it all his life, and you got it when he died, and boy, you've maintained it very well. It's in excellent shape right now. I love that car. What's your favorite car that you have, It. Well, I'd say... It'd either be that pickup or that Hudson that me and uh, uh, Bud Nichols built. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's kind of like uh, picking out which one of your favorite kids. Is. Yeah. But you got a lot of nice cars, and that, that Hudson is nice. I've got a bunch of Ford products. I've yeah. got, uh, I've got three uh, pickups that we bought new. Uh, right. Daddy bought one, I bought two. I've still got all of them. I got. My brother-in-law brought a 50 Ford Club Coupe back from California in 1952. Yeah. And he raised his family and, and let me have it. Yeah. I've done it back like Ford and put it out. That's right. And, and the cars you have, uh, you have restored a bunch of them and you done it yourself. You and Bud Nichols yeah. have done a lot, all of the restoration, didn't you? Yeah. I've you got even painted I have the invitation that you sent. to Canada because uh, it's hard people to get across the border there yeah. if they had any right. DUIs or any, yeah. anything, felony, anything. You couldn't, you could have a speeding ticket or something and make it, but I never did have that yeah. or hire either. So we just breeze right on across it. Well, I'll tell you, old Harry McClure was an interesting fellow. What a gentleman Harry McClure was. And I got a little story I'll tell here. It was, uh, I'm, I drove a school bus probably longer than almost anybody around here. Donald Reese and Clyde Wimpy beat me just by a year or two. But I drove a bus for 41 years, and I missed very few days during that whole time. And uh, here's the interesting thing. Harry McClure drove my bus <laughs> when I was in school. 
So old Harry was a good one. We just lost him just a few months ago. And we, we lost a good one right there. Okay. <clears throat> we have a, a lot of similar interests. Me and you, we, we have a lot of things yeah. that we see eye to eye on. Don't we we do. didn't know that no. until we got to working so closely together in the studio. And it just kept coming up that we agreed on just a whole lot of stuff. We got cars. Uh, we love cars. We love music. We love television. Forge. What's that? Fords. Fords, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We're Ford guys. Yeah, you got to bring, make sure you got a towel with you when you drive a Ford. That's all I'll say. But uh, we uh, we love cars and, and we love music and uh, love telling it like it is. We, uh, we have fun and we get things done. And uh, that's pretty much the way it is. Ed? You're still, you've worked hard all your life. And uh, sometimes people say, well, he's got this and he's got that. They don't mention the part where he's working three jobs. Yeah, I'm four. <laughs> yeah. I had four at one time. Yeah, they don't mention that part. Uh, it didn't come easy, I'll guarantee you that. And uh, <laughs> uh, you've, uh, you've worked hard all your life. You, you worked uh, on the farm. And uh, I remember chopping wood. And, uh, oh, yeah. I remember the first chainsaw I ever saw. Yeah. Ain't that something? Yeah. It was a big old bow saw that come around like that. It was a chainsaw. It had Take a motor. Take two people to hold Take it. Take about two people. And uh, I remember the old guy brought it over to the house. We said, we said he's going to cut us up some firewood. And he was calling it. He was from he was from off from here, that fella was. And uh, he'd call it a power saw. And I don't know what in the world he's talking about. <laughs> it, was, it was a power saw is what it was. <laughs> Power saw, that's what he called it. But yeah. it really did. We was all ganged up out in the yard out there at the wood pile watching him saw firewood that evening. And it was pretty interesting. But, uh, yeah, Ed, you've worked hard all your life. And I'll tell you something, too. I happen to know this, folks, about Ed Forster. He still works harder than most people around here today. At 86 years old, he still outworks just a whole <laughs> bunch of us. What do you do, Ed? You take care of things up on Roy Road. You, you, yeah, you work on your cars. You, you keep everything done. Tell us about it. Try to keep it done. And yeah. I'm not near as fast as I used to be. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, you got mowing you do up at Roy yeah, Road, don't got, you? Got mowing to do and a lot of here it. in East Town too. Yeah. And uh, you, know, yeah. you maintain just, your tractors and your cars and. And you mechanic, you do a lot of mechanic and steel, don't you? Well, I do my yeah, own, yeah. you know, yeah. as much as I can. Well, that's very interesting. I'll but it's, uh, I quit painting, though. I can't see good enough to paint. Well, I, I never could paint. <laughs> <laughs> so you should be glad I didn't start painting. That's, you're blessed there. But it's, uh, uh, it's, it's been, I've had a good ride showing yes, up. Sir, buddy. Been blessed real good and lucky too. Yes, sir, buddy. You've lived, you've uh, you've lived a whole lot of what a lot of people just dream about. You sure have. You've played a lot of music with a lot of people, and you've seen a lot of country and uh, a lot of this USA, and uh, you've been there and done it, brother. Yeah, if I'd have done everything the same, I'd have been way over a hundred years old. But I've done a lot of this at the same time. That's right. You know? That's right. That's exactly right. It's a it's a good little town we live in here. I like I love this place. Uh, we're, we write songs about it, and uh, I mean every word of it. We love it. We love it here in Yellow Jack. And uh, it's good to know people like you. You go way back. You remember the stuff from way back there. You remember when uh, when you come into town on Saturdays and uh, and you went to Penlands to get your stuff. I bet you remember that. Yeah, you? Penlands, Reese's, Reese's, yes sir. yes sir, buddy. Yes, and sir. I remember when when the, <clears throat> the road wasn't even paved around through East Town. It was paved to the yeah. railroad track. Yeah. And then then they, they finally got it paved out Roy uh, out 52 to yeah. Oakland School, you know, and then right. it was. It was gravel from there on the county line. Yeah. A long time. I was driving a bunch then. Yeah. Actually, I remember riding into town in a 52 Chevrolet truck. Used to. We'd come to Penlands. And one day in particular, I can tell you this, right outside this building in the parking lot out there, 
I climbed out of the back of a 52 Chevrolet truck I was sitting on a flower sack, okay? And I climbed out of the back of that 52 Chevrolet truck and I shook hands with the goat man right out there. <laughs> sure did. <laughs> and uh, and uh, we was coming through, down through there and Daddy said, the goat man's in town. We pulled in right here. It was no fruit stand at the time. And uh, shook hands with that goat man. You remember the goat man, Ed? Yeah, I sure do. Did you ever see him? Yeah, I've seen him. <laughs> I've seen him down in Atlanta and that way, too. Gosh, yeah, I've seen him all he's over the world. I reckon he's all over the whole country. I reckon he was. And uh, we remember those things. Well, folks, we thank you for watching us on ETC Television today. It's the Sherry Show. My name's Dwight Sanford, and this is my friend Ed Forster. And remember, folks, we have some fun, and we get things done. Thank you for watching. See who it was, and it was Nez. He'd walked up there to, from Grandma and Grandpa, and you could see he could tell he was upset about something. He walked in, he's Ed, and held his hands out over that old wood heater and looked up at Daddy with tears in his eyes and said, Aim, Hank Williams died this evening. <laughs> Okay, we're back with you. Dwight Sanford's my name. Got Ed Forster with me here, longtime friend. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit now about how we come up with the songs that we chose to put on our CD. We're going to talk about my Hank Williams tribute and Ed's coming back home to Georgia. Ed, what made you decide on the songs that you put on this CD? Well, I just had so many people when I had the band to go and you know it want me to record, ask me if I had records, and I'd tell them no, and uh, I said, I don't feel like I'm good enough to do that, and they said, oh, we need to have you do that, I said, you need to record some, so. Was, uh, was say, for example, uh, Far Side Banks of Jordan, was that something special to you? Yeah, that was. I, some of it was newer stuff, but I recorded 
two that I wrote in 1959, yeah. and then uh, the, the title track, there's a friend of mine that, uh, in a wheelchair. And he, and we, got, we got How Great Thou Art, and I'd like to say, by the way, I thought you did a heck of a job on that song right there, How Great Thou Art. Is that something you sung all your life, I guess? Well, pretty much, yeah. Yeah. We got, uh, of course, I've been wrong before. Uh, yeah, I like that song. You sung it. I, I'm, I'm honored that you did that. Thank you. And uh, Look For Me, that's a beautiful song. Yeah. All that. And it's just a bunch of stuff that was sort of close to your heart, I guess, wasn't it? Yeah. Yep. There's five gospel songs on there and one bluegrass. Yeah. I sung the bluegrass myself, you know. Yeah. Well, you sure did a fine job on this stuff. What was you? How old was you when we did this? Eighty-four, wasn't you? Yeah, eighty-four. During the sessions, he was eighty-four years old. Is that not incredible, folks? Eighty-four years old in the studio, cutting a new CD. I'm proud of you. You did good. <laughs> you did really good. I just, I would just tell people it's about fifty years late. Well. I think it has a quality, the old man singing the songs, it has a quality to it that can't be matched. It can't be matched. And uh, we got these things done. Congratulations, you've done a good job. I appreciate you. Well, hey, very good job. Better for you, it wasn't a band here. Well, <laughs> we, we worked together real well on it. We didn't, have, we didn't even have no problems. Uh, now about my Hank Williams tribute, this as I said earlier, Hank Williams is right here with me. He's really close to my heart. And uh, I guess uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very proud of my original CD, Welcome to Ella J. I like that a lot. And, uh, but I'm very, very, very fond of this Hank Williams CD. I guess I've probably listened to that CD myself more than anyone I've got. And it's hard. It's hard, folks, to, to select 10 songs that you're going to put on your CD by Hank Williams because he has so many excellent songs. It was tough. But I come up with these. Me and my mommy used to sing wedding bells together. And boy, that Astrid Hayes done a fine job on that high harmony right there on that one. Sounded like my mommy, actually. And, uh, and she sang with me on all of these songs, but all the ones of the, the Hank Williams that I did. It's just hard, but these are the ones I come at to do for the tribute and it left a whole lot that I should have done but you know you got to select 10 so that's what I did it was tough but these are 10 songs by Hank Williams that I always touch real close to home for me I, I love the, these ones I've done the Your Cheating Heart uh, Move It On no I didn't do Move It On over. I did uh, uh, Wedding Bells uh, I Can't Help It Kalijah, yeah, a bunch of good songs. And uh, like I say, when you choose 10 of Hank Williams songs, you'll see a lot of them that you'll think you should have done. But there it is. And I, if you love Hank Williams, you might like my CD. You just never can tell. And we thank you for watching, folks. And tune in to us again. We're on ETC. It's the Sherry Show. My name's Dwight Sanford. This is Ed Forrester. Thanks. I try so hard, my dear, to show that you're my every dream. Yet you're afraid each thing I do is just some evil scheme. The more I learn to care for you, the more we drift apart.
fun day. I had so much fun with those guys yesterday. Honestly, when you think about the music, you think about the memories, I really did not realize that Hank Williams had been gone since 1953. And that is a long time, a long time, I know, because I've been around a lot of that time. Um, I think about the music of today, I just don't get into it, but I certainly get into the old stuff, and I hope that y'all have enjoyed this tribute to the oldies and the guys who keep this music alive. We're going to end today with another song um, that Dwight did yesterday. Um, it, it just blows my mind that, um, you know, the generations before us, Maybe they will continue to remember him. Maybe if tributes keep being done to Hank Williams Sr., they will remember him. I think about the fact that he's been gone so long and he has two children who continue that music legacy. What if he hadn't had children? You know, what if he hadn't? Would, would the era have ended? And on Thursday, we're going to do a full-blown tribute to Hank Williams Sr. And I'm going to try... I'm going to try to get a song thrown in by Hank Jr. because it's one of the few that I really, really love, and I'm going to go ahead and download it. There's not, um, Hank Jr. is a totally different animal than his daddy, just totally different, and I think he wanted to be totally different because he didn't want people to compare him to his father. So it's, it's very weird to watch the difference in those two guys, but Hank Sr. had it going on. He definitely had it going on. Now, I want to remind y'all again, we are going to have an open house. This is July the 4th. The parade starts at 6, and we're going to have an open house beginning at 5 o'clock. And it is downtown, but not right on the square. We're right across from the Ace Hardware store. We're going to have refreshments, and we're going to have some giveaways, giving away lots of coupons for ice cream at Dairy Queen. Lots of coupon for sausage biscuits at Dairy Queen. And please remember that our local Dairy Queen has gone back to that good old country biscuit that they have done for years and years and years. And they are back into the country biscuit business. So go by and have your breakfast with them and get to know the nice folks that run that place. You know, this town is filled with small businesses that have survived the COVID. They've survived the crisis of, of the 2008 era when things went really crazy. And we are going to survive this crazy era we're in right now. I walked out of the grocery store the other day, and I had these four bags. And I was like, you know, you used to get a whole buggy full for what you spend now. It's a very weird time in America. We're looking at gas prices. We're looking at grocery prices. We're looking at interest rates going up. But we're going to be okay. We're going to be okay. And uh, we just have to buckle in there and, and get things done. And it's going to be okay. I have a precious, precious couple who's uh, buying a farm out on East Highway 52, and I cannot wait to get them here. If you've ever been around anybody who just smiles all the time, and I can't wait to bring her to do the show once she moves up here. She's a young attorney from Atlanta, but she's really not from Atlanta, and when you see her, you will understand that. She is absolutely gorgeous inside and out. And she is doing some farming. Now, she's an attorney because that's what she does for a living. But I love meeting people who do the multitasking. And it's like the three guys, the two guys that we just talked about. They had three jobs all their lives. That's what life is about. You do whatever it takes to get through it. You do whatever it takes. If you have to be the Avon lady at night, you have to have a Tupperware party to make a little money. You do whatever you have to do to get through these tough times. And we are going to get through the tough times. Without music, though, I don't think we would ever get through a day. And I think about the music sets the tone. So um, on Sunday, when I was lucky enough to make a trip down to Kite, Georgia, which is a long, long way, and uh, we shared a little bit that, with that yesterday, we're going to share an interview I did with a young man. He was so precious. And when I got there, I beat on the door, and he was in there cleaning up the restaurant, getting ready to open it the next day. And he had this loud, loud booming music going on, but he turned it down immediately so I could interview him and talk to him. Such a nice, nice young man. The world is full of good people. You just have to get out, open the door, get to know them, and let's join together and let's make the world a little bit better place. You know, um, set the tone. Set the tone for your day by doing something kind. Set the tone for the day by maybe inviting somebody out that hasn't been out of their house for a while. Set the tone by taking somebody um, something to eat. Take them some chicken salad. Take them, you know, take them something 
that you know that maybe they wouldn't make for themselves because they live alone. It, it is about doing for others. And um, I think we learned those lessons here in North Georgia. I think we are lucky enough to be blessed with a whole lot of people who do that. So to each and every one of you, um, I love you. I love spending time with you. And as we leave today, we're gonna leave with one more song that the guys did yesterday. And um, when we think about Ain't it good to be back home again? It is good to be back home. It is good to be home. I, th I think about my Tori. She left Georgia and she said, Nanny, I don't think I'll ever come back. I don't know how that works. You know, I don't know how you wrap your mind around that. But she started a whole new life in Alaska and um, she loves it. She loves the lifestyle. She loves the temperature. And I can tell you today, it's a prettier day in Alaska than it is in North Georgia because it's gonna be hot, so please stay hydrated. Please take care of yourself. Please drink lots and lots of water if you're out and about, or if you can find a creek in Gilmer County, just plop yourself down in the creek and have a wonderful afternoon. We're gonna go now to a little bit more music from the guys from yesterday. I hope that you will pick up your guitar, pick up your fiddle, Remember the music that came out of these mountains. These hills are full of amazing talent, and we're going to share more of them next week when our friend Vic Davis comes to visit. I'll see you again soon, only on ETC. That does it for us, folks. We thank you for tuning in to The Sherry Show on ETC Television. ETC is locally owned, and it's neighbors serving neighbors. Hey, it's good to be back home. Like you.